WTS presents 3, 2, 1 All the Feelings This episode Jealousy Tom, I have a question for you. Oh, good. Are you a jealous man? <laughs> Just a, that sounds like some weird old ad. I know. What I was thinking was maybe it would give the tone that I was about to slap you with a white glove or something, right? <laughs> yeah. A real classy, classy guy. That's our topic. Are you excited about today? I know you've been looking forward to this one since we rebranded. Well, this is the first time that we're doing two different feelings at the exact Army? same time. We are. I think we are. Uh, because we thought that they were the exact same thing. And maybe they are. We're about to find out very quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. But this was something that, yeah, I think um, uh, this was one that came up pretty early on in our list of things. And what do you think? Are you excited for it? I'm I'm excited for it because I think no one knows what it is, really. We all know what when we feel it. But right. like dogs playing poker... <laughs> we don't know what it is. Right. We just know that it's green. If it had a color, it's green. Yeah. Yeah. It is. The two feelings that we're going to be talking about today are envy and jealousy. Envy. Noun. A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. And then jealousy. Jealousy. Noun. The state or feeling of being jealous. Oh, well, that didn't work. Robot. Okay, do do jealous then. Jealous. Adjective. Fiercely protective or vigilant of one's rights or possessions. Okay, that'll work. That's better. Thank you, Robot. Take the rest of the day off. Robot did okay, but I honestly still don't think that, I mean, that, does, does that help in the the multitudinous, like, galaxy of feelings that come with jealousy like i asked you to start are you a jealous dude like do you find yourself easily jealous or dare i say envious well to answer that question i think we have to decide the difference between the two because i am one and i am not the other i Ooh. believe i do suffer from envy but i do not suffer from jealousy is my thought now here's what i wanted to start with pete Mm -hmm. is because first we have to decide uh, what the difference is. The ultimate question for my part is going to be, if you had to choose, would you rather be envious or jealous? Oh. If you had to choose. Now, before you answer that question, I think we have to decide the difference between the two. Do you know what the difference between the two is? Because unless you're a smarty pants, which I think you are, I thought that they were literally the same word. Not literally oh, the same no, word. I, that would be insane. I thought I've insane. been using them synonymously. Is that the right word? Yes. Inter interchangeably, interchangeably. My entire life. I never thought that there was a difference between the two. And there is. And I was wondering if you perhaps know what it is. Well, so robot helped just a minute ago, but not yep. really. Right. Because this whole idea of being a resentful or, or aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities or luck. That's envy and mm -hmm. jealousy protective or vigilant of one's rights or possessions, mm -hmm. there are a lot of the same words in there. <laughs> there literally are. <laughs> the difference is, even if you look very closely at those two definitions, envy, for lack of a better word, and this isn't science-y stuff. I, this is all my yeah. writing, so if I'm okay. a little bit jumpy, my apologies. Envy seems like is when you want what someone else has. Jealousy is when you're worried that someone's going to take what you have. Do you see the difference between mm. those two? So if you want your neighbor's, this I found on the internet, if you want your neighbor's new convertible, you feel envy. Envious. If you take your neighbor, if your neighbor takes your wife for a ride in that new convertible, <laughs> you feel jealousy. Because you're, you're envious. Yes, is you're, what you are. You're it's afraid all you think. you're never going to come back and you just wave goodbye to your wife and she <laughs> lives in a convertible now. Well, and that's why a lot of the, uh, a lot of the sort of the therapist, behavioral scientists, are calling out jealousy when it involves humans, like the, right. the sort of traditional triangle of jealousy in relationships, right? Right, because jealousy in, involves another party. Yes. Usually, and because you're worried that something will be taken. Envy involves their stuff. Correct. Envy is internal. 
Envy is something that you're feeling inside. Jealousy, well, jealousy is also something that you yeah, feel inside. Saying? But it's about <laughs> other things. It's from, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because also envy is internal, but it can lead to external actions. Because, you know, what's the most famous thing about envy if you had to pick? I don't know where we're going here. What exactly. is the most famous well, envy thing Envy is about a deadly envy. sin. Oh, envy, if you're it's comparing one of the envy and jealousy, yeah. jealousy is not a deadly sin. Envy is a deadly sin because where does it come? Where does the deadly sin come from? Do you know that from the Bible? Probably you are going to be the one to answer that. That's a okay. cell phone. Yeah. It's uh, Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain <gasps> uh, felt envious of uh, uh, his brother's offering of lamb uh, mm -hmm. was chosen over his offering of wheat, and so Cain committed the first murder he slow he slayed slain slain he slew it he unbegatted he he <laughs> slayed his brother like a real bible jerk i don't know any yeah. of the words that's yeah. why it's a deadly sin um so does and that, that was also the first example biblically of gluten intolerance <laughs> that's right <laughs> and thou shall be pescatarian <laughs> so um, okay, so those are the two. Are you able to separate them at least a little bit? One is more you've got the stuff and you're afraid someone's going to take it away, or you don't have the stuff, but you want it. That's jealousy and envy covetous. Respectfully. Yeah, Correct. okay. So now that we have that sort of, I want to try mm -hmm. this again. If you had to pick, because I know what I thought, but then I went and reversed it. Spoiler alert. If you had to choose one, would you rather be envious or jealous? And why? Really putting you on the spot. I think envious. Okay, how come? I think because, I, I don't know, this is such a weird question. Like, oh, yeah. I really want to be one or the other, which I don't. I don't right. love I'm, either I'm quality forcing. in myself. Yeah. yeah. But envious because uh, I don't like what jealousy does to my most important relationships. Mm, go more right? into that. And je well, like uh, I have been in the past a jealous person. I don't think I'm a jealous person now. And part of that is having been in a relationship for 25 years. And right. so I, I think we're beyond it. And yet. Until your neighbor gets that convertible. <laughs> until my neighbor gets a convertible. Um and and so, but, but I do know what it feels like. And I have those really, you know, we did the whole thing on regression. And this is one of those experiences when I I can put myself in a place of being furiously jealous mm. and and making up some incredibly impossible stories in my own mind mm -hmm. that that are rooted in jealousy and are fabulously untrue. Right. You're filling a and, void and you're yeah. making it, you're filling it with something dark because that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Well, we're and also I don't love, anxious. Yeah. People. I don't love that. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. That, that's what we talked about that the, uh, an episode or two ago, ideally, if you're going to make something up, make it happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. The convertible, I know how to make up really dark stuff. Yeah. Right. The convertible crashes, but then she flies out right into your arms. And into you're my a hero. Arms. Right. Right. <laughs> that's not a good And I'm riding do. a unicorn at the time. Sure. <laughs> Would you like to know me? Of course. I thought it would be better. I would rather feel jealousy after knowing the difference between these two because I have the thing that I want. Like it starts with jealousy is you have something and you're afraid it's going to be taken away. And so I was like, oh, but in that case, sure, I'm a little anxious about it, but I have the thing. Like it's better to uh -huh. have and lose than never had at all or whatever I read at Home Goods. Doesn't that make you <laughs> a, a miser though, kind of? like <laughs> Maybe. But again, you just have make to you a real Scrooge McTom. Uh, well, I love diving into my coin room. Um, <laughs> so that's why I thought I would rather feel jealousy. But jealousy involves feeling, like you said, unsafe or bad about other people. And that's something mm -hmm. I strive not to do, just like you just said. And I switched to envy because envy, even though it's a gross internal feeling, it can also be a motivator. When used ah. correctly, I want that thing. Then, because there's two types of envy. Can I break it down for you real quick? I hope you do. There's malicious envy and non-malicious envy. Do you want to guess what those are? Or should I just blaze <laughs> right through? <laughs> you can probably figure it out. Yeah. Uh, malicious envy involves hostility or resentment toward another person mm -hmm. who has it better than you. Um, you, uh, 
it's almost like you want to take away what they have or you want uh, to undermine their success or happiness. Yes. You wish them the worst because you don't have it. Non-malicious envy focuses more on the objects and wondering how did they get it? And can yeah. I do the same thing? You don't actually want their thing. That's where yes. covetousness comes. You don't necessarily want their thing, but you want your own version of it. That's yes. non-malicious envy. And that can be a really good motivator for things. It's how it's like what vision boards are. Right. Vision boards right. are in a way non-malicious envy is you put up all of these pictures from magazines of things that you want. Yeah. And you're like, how am I going to do those? I don't think you should shoot a wish laser out into the universe. Uh, for those of you that are still that just found the secret, I think instead <laughs> you should like take night classes, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do on the ground to really motivate yourself or to start taking those kind of steps. Um, this is like, this is like my buddy Ocean we've talked about. He's a uh -huh. good friend of mine. He has an awesome, he moved into this awesome new house and found a walled off home theater and home gym that were behind a wall that he drilled into. He found a what? set of, oh yeah, I've shown you this. Have I not shown you this? I don't remember. It oh, was, yeah. It was in his house like a panic room, but... Yes, behind a closet. He drilled into a wall and walked through the wall and found an entire home theater and then stairs going down into the ground with a magnificently giant home gym space that actually had a zip line in it. It was so large, multi-level. Wait a I, minute. You know what? Why yeah. is this? This is like barbarian. <laughs> it, but it's good. amazing. It's the good exactly version of right, barbarian. Exactly what it was. That's envy for me because it's like, oh my God. Right. I, that is the thing. It's envy that <laughs> motivates me. Like I can be happy for him that he has this thing. And it motivates me to come home and start poking holes in my walls. <laughs> oh, no, Pete. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You like, made that's non-malicious like, envy malicious on your own house. <laughs> yes. I just Swiss cheese my house to see if there's a home theater in the wall here. Right. Like a Narnia. Yeah. There isn't. <laughs> no. And you've got <laughs> I'll settle wardrobe that. doors all <laughs> yeah. over the place. Yeah. <laughs> those steel plates. Well, I learned that from you, Dad. <laughs> you uh, found my old landlord to come help? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> but that's the, that's the feeling. Like the exuberance and joy that I have with knowing that he has this thing is sure. awesome. Right. And man, it would be, uh, I would love to have it myself. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah. And then another person might say, let me try to make more money so I can build a home theater. Yeah. So they would be, I I'd, I'd like the lottery solution. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're just going out and buying more hammers, claw hammers. <laughs> Because you know somewhere in your house there's a, another dishwasher or something like that, whatever you sort of want. There's another dishwasher. That's not what I'm envious of. <laughs> you love dishwasher. Oh, my God. Maybe maybe in the kid's bedroom there's yeah. another Kenmore. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we are on the same page as far as envy over jealousy because jealousy is you have it. You, all, you called me a miser, and you're just sitting there hoarding and hoping that someone that you don't lose it. And if you're ever and so envy, yes, I think that we're both on the same page as far as envy is the way to go. If you use it correctly, mm -hmm. uh, I found a family therapist named Emily Simonian, who says, if you're wondering which kind of envy you're feeling, malicious envy or non malicious envy, uh, she says she has this simple fill in the blank that she offers oh, to good. her clients. It's I'm envious and it makes me want to blank. If the answer is cry, <laughs> go and make another appointment. If the answer is tarnish someone's reputation, then that's malicious. Malicious. And if it's better yourself, then yeah, yeah. non-malicious. Then you're using that. There's an entire uh, field that is based, some would say, around envy as a motivator. Do you know what it might be? I've actually sort of mentioned it a little bit. MLM? <laughs> yes, but <laughs> that's different. That's all malicious. Uh, yeah marketing advertising yeah, yeah uh there's actually a term in advertising called envy marketing which is a yeah. super gross and b super effective because right. when i'm sitting on my couch watching glistening people in nikes run upstairs like rocky i'm like yeah i should probably do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't make me buy nikes but it does get me off the couch sometimes and that's motivation well, and did we talk about that? I, I, I feel like we might have had this conversation where it's like you know, beer manufacturers always show you with uh, 
with people around, right? They, they, in the commercials, right. they're always communities. They never show you alone. <laughs> How you normally drink beer, which is just drinking a six pack by yourself in a dark room, watching like the shopping network. Right. You're always there. Yeah. In TV land, they're always watching the big game. Yeah. Because you're right, not allowed to say right. what the big game is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So that is that is just sort of what I wanted to talk about. That's the difference between envy and jealousy. They're very tied together, but one can be seen as better than the other as long as you use it as a motivator. Because if you have envy yeah. with no action, then that's what leads to, as we said before, resentment. And so to end this whole thing, I think we should have an envy off. You're going to say something that you're envious of me. That'll motivate you to change your life. <laughs> and I will say the vice versa, because that was too many words. It was hard to say. Okay. Well, I think we should tease that and we should do it at the end. Oh, You've now so we can think table, about it. Yep. And we're going to need to think about it. Okay. I'm, I'm envious of so much of you <laughs> oh, that I don't Pete. know how to narrow it down. Oh, and I bet yeah. I can come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> And now, Selections on Envy. Jesse is a friend. Yeah, I know. He's been a good friend of mine, but lately, something's changed. That ain't hard to define. Jesse's got himself a girl, and I want to make her mine. And she's watching him with those eyes. And she's loving him with that body. <laughs> I just know it. Yeah. And he's holding her in his arms late at night. You know, I wish that I had Jesse's girl. I wish that I had Jesse's girl. Where can I find a woman like that? Rick Springfield. Do you hear that? Drums, I think. And cheers? A lot of cheers. It sounds like a wedding. It is! There in the crowd, a bride. Blushing, beautiful. Oh, you remember your wedding day, don't you? The friends and family. The food. Mmm, the cake. Such joy. It is truly a singular experience in your life. Wait a minute. Is that... Another bride? Is this a dual wedding? Amazing! Oh, take a picture because you have never seen such a thing as a dual wedding beyond in the movie. Wait, what's this now? Is that another bride? And another bride? Jesus, overkill much? Not if you're Habib Nskanene of Uganda. Not at all. Habib has a problem, and he solved it with one epic set of nuptials. You see, polygamy is legal in Uganda, and it's a cultural norm, and in spite of numerous attempts to make it illegal, all those efforts fail time and time again. He's got it in his family. He says, my grandfather had six wives who were separated by curtains in a single home. My own late father had five wives, and I myself have four wives who live in one house. No, the multiple spouses thing that's not the issue Habib was looking to fix. See, Habib is an empathetic sort, and he was worried, as he was dating each of these women, that the idea of progressive dating toward marriage would create jealousy between them. And so he introduced each to one another, one at a time, all seven of them. And then, in one single ceremony, they wed. Following the event, the husband and his new wives, Aisha, Aisha, Fatuma, Sharifa, Rashida, Maryam, and Zainab, returned to their home together by six. Do you know what's exactly like a polygamous marriage? 
podcast fandom. You don't have to settle for just one. Support as many as you'd like. And you can marry our podcast and become a feeling friend today for just $35. You'll get access to the member live stream when we record, early access to the shows in your very own member podcast feed, our latest batch of stickers, and a present from Tom, the classic ATF bingo card. Visit our fancy new URL for the show, all the feelings.fun today. Tom, uh, you've heard of jealousy. I have. Mm. Famously complicated uh, feeling, as, as we discussed just minutes ago. As we ago. discussed, yeah. Yeah. I uh, was wondering, as we do, how, how did we become jealous as humans? Why? Why jealousy? Why jealousy? And okay. I, I would like to know if you have any insight before I tell you that there is insight and an answer. I'd like to know if you get it right. Why are, we as are humans human... jealousy jealous? Why are humans jealousy jealous? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> now I have to leave that in. You made a joke about it. <laughs> now I have to leave it in. Damn you. I guess humans are jealousy jealous because... <laughs> Je envious, I know, because you would just see the difference between you and someone else. You mean like evolutionary? I don't know. I don't know if yeah. I have a thing. Evolutionarily. Why are we jealous? Because, because does it make any sense to you intuitively even? Even if you can't put words to it, does it make sense why we are jealous? Yes, to a certain extent. I guess if you had when resources were very little and you had a teeny bit of what was important like a rock or stone, a rock or a stone. <laughs> There's a huge difference. If you have a rock and you're like, boy is boy, that stone looks good. <laughs> um, that maybe it came out of just uh, self-protection, that you had a thing that you needed. And so if it got taken away from you, you would be in a lot of trouble. Boy, that's all I got. I don't like it. I, that's what I, I love that you went with rock and or stone <laughs> as the root of all jealousy. You know, it's funny that there are people who really believe very stridently, stringently, mm -hmm. uh, assertively, mm -hmm. all of those, mm -hmm. that jealousy is a cultural construct that without like the the modern sort of Anthropocene complications, we would not know jealousy. There would be no reason for jealousy. Okay. Right? right? That humans, the only reason jealousy can exist is because humans are a constituent element of it. I see. Got it. Right. And yet, behavioral scientists have really come down to the following logic from an evolutionary perspective. Okay. Jealousy is very likely to have developed as a mechanism to mate gate, to mate protect gate. pair bonds that are important for successful reproduction and child rearing. Encouraging partner fidelity helps ensure a male's genetic lineage is passed on and prevents, oh. or at least absolves, uh, small microcultures of genetic complication. Got it. Put that in English again. Fine. When jealousy exists in a community, partners are more likely to stay partnered with each other and not <laughs> commingle genetic nonsense. Got it. Thus, the tribe yeah. continues and gets bigger and better and, and thrives and is healthy. Oh, is that so that's not humans. That's all animals or it it could very well describe a lot of single partner um, creatures, right? right? A lot of animals are single partner animals and they they do, in fact, um, uh, stick with part swans, right? Like swans are notoriously yep. single partner, even though they do. They have been known to sleep around swans. Actually, apparently, according to biologists, uh, do sleep around and it is measured in males. They are incredibly jealous, incredibly jealous creatures when their single mate sleeps around on them. Uh, uh, can you imagine? Like, the, I want to be the guy who does that research. Like, I want to do the <laughs> jealousy research on swans. <laughs> it's amazing that that even exists. So how does jealousy then manifest in that? Is it that you work harder to keep your mate happy so they won't swan all over the place? Well, or is both it that ways. you? Okay. 
And and can you guess the what what how jealousy manif- manifests? And this goes back to the evolutionary perspective too, weirdly, uh, how it manifests in in uh, male bodied people versus female bodied people. Jealousy. Mm-hmm. Male bodied people. I would just because we like to knock things over with our penises. <laughs> I would think that we oh, we would maybe respond with. Uh, suspicion and aggression, maybe keeping people over away what? from over what specifically? What behavior makes men jealous versus women? Oh, like flirtation, something like you, that. Like you're is... you're digging in the right hole. Okay, gross. Um, <laughs> I would think that it would be, it well, yeah, jealous that someone can take our mate away. I guess that's, I am sort of saying the same things over and over again. What you could say it in fewer letters, as many as three, it's sex. Oh, always sex. Tom, you said knocking things over with penises. I did. It's the sex. That's how you use sex, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You slam around stuff. What about women? Love. Affection. Is that sexual connection? Emotional connection. Emotional Emotional connection. connection. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that is how it is described. Like that Uh, is, that is how jealousy is generally described uh, between um, the, you know, across the broad swath of research that exists historically, not addressing the complicated nature of sex and gender today. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of that research. I could not find a lot of that research, but uh, when we're talking about sex and jealousy, women tend to get jealous when their single partner has uh, an emotional connection with another person, and men get jealous when their partner has sex with another person. Now, you would think that the corollary is that women are not as jealous when men go uh, actually have sex, that it's just a sex thing, and that uh, the opposite would be true. Um, that men would be okay with women having emotional connections with other men. I didn't find anyone that said, oh, yeah, that's totally true. That right. doesn't seem to be true. <laughs> right. But it's just like one is more of a priority, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Takes yeah, up more of a fixation. A, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So I thought it was really interesting when you add the, because a lot of, of people, especially in the comments, I read it, come back and say, but what about <laughs> the tribes or cultures like in Uganda that are polyamorous or mm-hmm. the Inuit people, which have a, 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 a practice, a general accepted practice of sharing one's wife, right? I didn't know that. Apparently they do. Okay. Uh, and so I'm curious what your thoughts are about those things. Do you have any speculation as to, as to what might, uh, what might be, uh, true in in respect to jealousy in those communities no (laughs) it's not good it's not a good thing right because you use this on the surface you use it as a as a a cultural guard right Mm -hmm. that says okay humans are we it's our culture that makes us jealous not anything else but in in truth when you look at this is the the research that i thought was really interesting that infidelity in groups like the Hold on, I have to scroll. I've lost my I've lost my point. There it is. Bingo Stay cards. Stay there. I got it. <laughs> bingo cards are Everyone out. that has a bingo card, that's one of the spaces. <laughs> I, have to, his... I actually have to command F and find Inuit. <laughs> it was up higher than I was even looking. No, that's I, not I wanted fair. to make this point 15 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, so for those who argue that jealousy is a cultural invention. And, and using the ammunition of societies like the Inuit, uh, it, it is really interesting because the, uh, the outcomes of those don't address the fact that for the Inuit, a wife-sharing relationship is an act of extraordinary and painful generosity, right? That it is the, the actual uh, sharing is It's a massive gift that you're giving to someone else to share your wife and not something made easily or commonly. Oh, it's a real sign of respect? Yes. Okay. And also, um, spousal abuse is very, very high in communities with polyamorous relationships. It's much higher than in in monogamous relationships, right? So it's like... like Pretending that you're so cool and open with everything, but really it's simmering. Yeah. Everything's simmering underneath. Okay. Right. Got it. Right. 
And and that makes me just really consider, you know, the evolutionary explanation of of in, of you know uh, jealousy mm-hmm. around some of our common or, or or sort of changing cultural trends today around sex and identity and polyamory and all those things as we're talking about Uganda and we're talking about the Inuit. But what about right here at home when you have, uh, you know, I, I don't know, we should look at the Google uh, word search, right? The g- term search to see how many times thruple has been used in the last decade oh, up- sure. over the 50s. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I don't know is, do we have any long term research on that that answers the question? Do these things work? Right. Right. Do these kinds of relationships really work? And what sort of, I, and I'm sure they do, but how? Like, what are the constraints? What are the considerations mm-hmm. that, that go into these kinds of relationships? And I don't, I don't know the answer to that. So that was a really surprising thing. And now, once again, like so many evolutionary triggers, we don't really need it anymore, right? The the world has enough people that our genetic pool is, you know, it's it's Spread already out. complicated enough, right. right? Like we don't need to feel jealous for mate gating anymore. So what service is it? What service is it? Is it more of an emotional guide for us or is it something else and is it something that serves each relationship individually i think that's a another yeah. really interesting constraint the uh the doctor uh there's a doctor that i wanted to to bring up because he wrote a book it's dr robert Leahy, and he wrote the jealousy cure learn to trust overcome possessiveness and save your relationship uh it's pretty recent 2018 he wrote this book and he actually okay. has some things to do and i'll bet you can guess every single one of them Okay, let's do a couple. Okay. Uh, What are you going to do to help absolve yourself of feelings of jealousy in an intimate relationship? You're going to validate and normalize the jealousy. You're going to talk about it, recognize that it's a difficult emotion to have and that it is a universal emotion. We all share it, no matter how big a game we talk. Uh, We're going to consider giving up. I like this one. This, he just says it like it's just so easy. Dr. Mm. Leahy, with his effortless con- uh, effortlessness here, consider giving up your jealousy control behaviors. Relinquish the interrogation, checking, following, and controlling. The more you engage in these behaviors, the more you feed your jealousy. Mm. Okay, I kind of get that. Yeah, um, I'm going to stop reading your email. Uh, <laughs> set aside time where you will focus on your jealousy thoughts. I call this jealousy time, says Dr. Leahy. Whatever thoughts you have at other times, write them down and set aside 20 minutes a day for these thoughts. So you're going to wallow in, in your, your jealousy. jealousy trough for 20 minutes a day. If you're a jealous person, I have to imagine maybe that's helpful. I don't know. That seems uh, maybe, but that high. does... Die to me. <laughs> yeah. That might just create some new habits that I yeah. don't really want. Put on your jealousy <laughs> shroud and go into your jealousy closet and rock back and Begin forth. Begin the under. ritual jealousy beating. <laughs> um, develop some ground rules with your partner about what behavior is okay and what is not, and try to be flexible. For example, having dinner with an ex partner might be a hot trigger. Think about ground rules for that, mm. uh, especially if that dinner is followed up with sex. Okay. <laughs> recognize yeah. that if if things don't work out there is life after this relationship sometimes relationships fall apart sometimes people do cheat sometimes it is not the right fit for you there was a life before this relationship and there is a life after so really dr lay says everybody's wow. jealous if right. you don't beat yourself appropriately you're going to keep being jealous and also your relationship won't last don't worry about it <laughs> yeah. That got <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Leahy. Weird and grim and weird. <laughs> <laughs> and now, selections on jealousy. And you know, it might not be that bad. You were the best I'd ever had. If I hadn't blown the whole thing years ago, I might not be alone. Tomorrow we can drive around this town and let the cops chase us around. The past is gone, but something might be found to take its place. Hey, jealousy. Hey, jealousy. 
Hey, jealousy. Hey, jealousy. G blossoms. Tom, we're back. What? So what? Uh, yeah, let's do their thing. You oh, set the en- up you, the envy off. You slapped me with a white glove. <laughs> I did. Yes. Uh, what are we envious of that we will use for non-malicious envy as motivators yes. for moving forward? This is exciting. Yes. Okay. Who wants to mm-hmm. go first? You want to Rosham? I think we better Rosham. Okay. Otherwise, it's just fishing. All Got right, it. Here, here we, we go. go. Mm-hmm. One, One, two, two three. three. Oh, oh no. Scissors. Wait, there's a delay. Okay. One, One two, two, three. three. Mm. Aha! Okay, you cut me. So what you does that mean? Me. I that go first? You to choose. Oh. I'll go second. Ha <laughs> 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 Nasty. You have been slapped. Wicked hobbits. Yes. Um, well, I, it's there is just so much. Again, as I said. <laughs> I know it doesn't take much to go far apart from your fanciful bookshelves. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for me, when I finish these podcast recordings, I don't have to even do this for this week. I think about it every week. How can I sharpen uh, my, the, the tempo of my wit like Tom? I am envious of the way you roll your jokes into your language. I think you are one of the funniest people that I have ever met. And I constantly hold you up as an aspirational figure in how I can, can make myself can remake myself in the image of you. No, not completely (laughs) just in some in these in these ways. There you go. Boy. Well, now this is now yours is crap, isn't it? And uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah. This was your idea, by the way. I know. All right. Thank you, Feeling Friends. So what are we talking about <laughs> next week? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I have one. Uh, and it involves you, but it also involves other people. And it's going to start with a very creepy sentence. Mm. I'm envious of your family, Pete. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Weird, dear. Right? No, I am envious of your ability to have such a wonderful wife. And two amazing children that you, that is something that has always been something that I'm wondering if I want. I don't know if I necessarily want children. I enjoy being an uncle. But Mm -hmm. you have such an, if I was to choose a family to see as an inspiration or aspiration, I don't know what any of the words are, it would be yours. And I've been so lucky to spend time with your family and the Excitement that you have together, the joy that you have together uh, is just infectious and it's wonderful. And so I have a dog um, Mm -hmm. and that's wonderful, (laughs) but it's just not the same. And I don't expect uh, Foster to take care of me when I get older. We're going to work that out. Uh, But no, I think uh, and that, you know, you are the type of person that is that comes to both you and uh, the lovely Kira that you would be able to create. And you talked about in this episode that you've been together for so long. Yeah. So long that it's just incredible. And so uh, I love you guys very much and I'm envious of that. And now your family will be mine. What? That is, <laughs> that is weird and delightful. And thank yep. you so much. We oh take great pride in the relationship that we work hard together. So mm-hmm. that means a lot. That means a lot. You can't have them. Well, but, I mean, yeah, 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 no, can't have yeah, restraining no. orders. No. Hey. <laughs> what are they? They're just paper. <laughs> when it's cloudy, I don't see you. When it's dark, I lose your spark. And I don't have another moment when you're not around. I know you're my ray of light. Somehow I have lost your sight. I have got mysterious ways to bring you back into my life. And I, I, I'm gonna make you mine. Thank you all so much for joining us for this episode on jealousy and envy. And we know what it means now. No, we don't. (laughs) Anyway, we're really excited to have had this conversation and now be done with it. This week's tune is Make You Mine by Mina. Tom, what are we talking about next week? Oh, next week we are looking up. Things are looking up, Pete. I'm envious for next week because we are talking about optimism. And optimism. I bet we'll make it dark. <laughs> we'll find a way if anyone can. <laughs> That's us. 
<laughs> Until then, I'm Pete Wright. And I'm Tommy Metz III. Thank you so much for downloading. We will be back next week with all the feelings. I'm gonna make you mine